Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today we're going to talk about the Battle of Champion Hill, located in Hines County, Mississippi, between Union Major General Ulysses S. Grant and his Army of the Tennessee, and Confederate Lieutenant General John C. Pemberton and his Department of Mississippi and East Louisiana. This occurred on the 17th of April, 1863. While celebrating his current series of victories, Union General Grant met with his commanders to discuss the threat in the room. Confederate General Joseph E. Johnston. Johnston's retreat from Jackson was unexpected for all. Until now, they believed that there would have been a battle that would have settled the fight between Johnston and Grant. But now Grant had to be wary of Johnston's troops, plus to more than 22,000 troops Johnston ordered Pemberton to bring to his aid and attack the Union at Clinton. Grant ordered his troops to defend a five-mile-long area from Raymond through Bolton. The total Union troops were approximately 32,000 men, involving seven different divisions. Pemberton himself, hearing of the Union solidifying their lines, decided that Johnston's plan was going to fail, and called for an audible. Instead of following orders, he moved his men to the southeast to try and destroy the Union supplies and not engage the Union directly in a full battle. On the evening of May 15th, Pemberton received orders from Johnston again to come to his aid. Being called out twice, Pemberton couldn't justify ignoring the orders, and turned his troops around and marched back, settling in at a place called Champion Hill. Having just settled in, Pemberton's morning peace was shattered by the Union assault on the hill at 7 a.m. Pemberton's men were spread across a five-kilometer line that wound northeast to southwest, using a ridge overlooking Jackson Creek for cover. It was one of the highest overlooking areas in the region and made an excellent defensive position. An unfortunate circumstance had occurred, though. Pemberton was aware of two Union forces marching towards him, his scouts reported back the Union position as they marched. Unfortunately, the Pemberton scouts had missed a third force that was moving along Pemberton's left flank. All was not lost, as he had posted Brigadier General Stephen D. Lee's Alabama Brigade on Champion Hill directly. Lee quickly spotted the third Union force. Realizing the Union troops were about to cut off Pemberton from Vicksburg, Lee began to prepare for a fight. The Union troops, upon noticing the Confederates on the hill, didn't let grass grow under their feet. They shifted their focus and began to bombard the hill with artillery. Union General Grant arrived after 10 a.m. and ordered General John A. McClernand's corps to attack on the left, General McPherson to attack on the right, while General Sherman waited in the rear for his time. The crest of the ridge was taken just after the noon hour, and McPherson's troops swept through the crossroads and closed off Jackson Road from Johnston's retreat. The Confederate forces reacted quickly under the command of John S. Bowen, and they took Champion Hill back for a short time. Unfortunately, they couldn't hold it with how few men there were. To help Bowen, Confederate General Pemberton ordered Confederate Major General William W. Loring to assist Bowen. Confederate General Loring promptly refused the order, telling Pemberton that there were too many Union soldiers near his camp and he couldn't risk it. Union Commander Grant, however, had no compunction about attacking the Confederates under Bowen, and Bowen's men collapsed under the weight of Grant and his fresh forces. All was not lost, however, as Confederate Brigadier General Lloyd Tillman and his brigade stepped in to weigh the Union forces to give aid to their comrades retreating. This rearguard action allowed Confederate troops to retreat, although, unfortunately, General Tillman himself died that afternoon from a Union artillery strike. Losses were moderate for both sides, with the Confederate forces taking the largest share. Grant's Union forces suffered a total of 2,457 men lost, including four. 110 killed, 1,844 wounded, and 187 men missing. Pemberton's forces were worse off, with a total of 3,840 men lost, including 381 killed, 1,018 wounded, and 2,441 missing or captured. It should be noted that a large portion of the missing Confederate soldiers were said to be part of Loring's division, which instead of fighting like ordered, had marched away to join up with Joseph E. Johnston and Jackson. Join us again next time on Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition.